Blessed be the name of the Lord. In hand. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faith. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. A warm welcome this afternoon to St. Margaret's Church, Westminster Abbey. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you. We have come here today to remember before God our brother Ben, Emmanuel Benjamin, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, to commit his body to be cremated, and to comfort one another in our grief. Let us God of all consolation, your Son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Look with compassion on your children in their lives. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of death. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, and can it be that I should get an interest in the same music?
My dad, according to my mum, was a man who said that he didn't really want any tributes when he went. But it's almost impossible if you reach the age of 88 to not have people talk about you. 88 years is a long time. And I would say that my dad was lucky because for the vast majority of his lifetime, he generally kept good health and also managed, or at least attempted, to do many of the things that he always wanted to. He was never a trained artist, but he definitely had an artist's sensibility. Outside of his regular working life, he always spent time doing the things that he enjoyed. He was an avid reader, he also wrote, he sketched, he sculpted, and at one time, he realized a personal ambition to exhibit some of his work in London. That was around 20 years ago. If I had to characterize him in a nutshell, I'd say, he was essentially quiet, but ultimately independent and self-assured. However, despite being the kind of man who was happy in his own company, he loved the fact that he had a soulmate in his wife, my mum. In some ways, I felt that we never had to worry about my mum and dad because they always seemed like such a robust team. This became even more evident during my dad's last few months, when I witnessed the many times he spoke up very publicly about how grateful he was for my mum's care, companionship, and attentiveness. This was a couple who managed to entertain, amuse, and ultimately respect each other, even through life's natural ups and downs, throughout the 60 years that they were together. That's quite an achievement. In his last months, weeks, and days, my dad was also as vocal as he could be in expressing how much he recognized the level of attention that he received from all of us as a family. Right up to the end, he showed a consistent amount of mental strength, even occasional humor, as well as a profound level of patience, reflection, grace, and acceptance. That was humbling. Recently, I told a friend that my dad had passed away, and I like the words that she responded with. Essentially, she said that even with the loss of a parent, a partner, or anyone close, you can still have a relationship with them. Most likely, a new type of relationship that can develop gradually, through all the thoughts and memories of that person that you choose to keep. Thank you. A tribute to my brother-in-law. We are all here today, mourning a man of great integrity, a gentleman's gentleman. A humble being, softly spoken, well mannered, the best husband slash father anyone could wish for. Simply, he was one of the best. The name of this man is Mr. Emmanuel Benjamin Ogren.
I was here in May from Ghana when I saw him. He was unwell and bedridden. He was very happy to see me and he shook my hand. His grip was very strong. He asked of all family members back home by their names. And he said to me, Christina, do you know all my siblings have died and I'm the only surviving one? I said to him, you've done very well to survive all your siblings. He then said to me, this is my time to go. So he knew. And I said to him, God's time is the best. Just, just before my return to Ghana in June, I told him I was going back home. His message was to tell the family back home that he's not well, but as soon as he recovers, they will see him in Ghana. I would clearly see his health was failing then. We were all very sad when we heard the news of his passing. And here I am to get again today from Ghana, representing the entire Hackman family in Ghana and abroad. Yogo, we will forever remember you. May your soul rest in peace. Sleep well till we meet again. Amen. A reading from the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Thanks be to God. We now stand to sing our second hymn, O Lord my God, when I in awesome love
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This afternoon we come together with common purpose of remembering Ben, Emmanuel, Benjamin, and commending his soul back to God, his Creator. We are united by a very special bond of faith and of fellowship, but also in sadness and in loss. Everyone's death diminishes me, said the poet. But it is the death of those we admire and love that diminishes us the most. The reading that we've just heard from the Revelation to St. John the Divine is not all about endings. In fact, its theme is very much about beginnings. Its magnificent vision is immensely reassuring. It says to us that the universe and all its life came into being purposefully as an act of divine love. And despite appearances, the course of this world and of our lives within it shall still uphold that purpose and that meaning. It may seem as though things fall apart, yet the centre holds because everything is embraced with the life of God himself. As St John says in his Holy Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And if life begins in God, then it ends in Him too. For everything is gathered up in His great love for the world. Nothing is wasted, Nothing is lost, all in the end is harvest. And that is why this funeral service is a celebration. Even though we bring to it sadness and perplexity and perhaps even a little anger. It's good to remember that this light will shine forth for a unique individual human being. Emmanuel is unique before the eyes of God. For as St John the Divine tells us, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth has passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. In other words, what are we, because of the light of God illuminating each human life? What we have is the possibility of becoming, as people, good, courageous, honourable, steadfast and kind. For all these things begin in that God-given light that bathes us all in the moment of our birth. 
in remembering and giving thanks for Emmanuel, we also give thanks for all that God has done through him, from his very beginning right to the end. And these themes of thankfulness to God and the light of his presence and goodness are captured in so much of what we have heard and sung this afternoon. Even the tiny flickering flames of the candles on the altar have the capacity to scatter the deepest darkness. And this points us to the source to which we must go. In order to find direction and meaning in a perplexing world. That source, says St John, is the light of all things and of all people, the Word made flesh. He is grace and truth, he is love in heart, he is the giver of love. He shines on us in our living and our dark. His light irradiates our being and indeed our ends. In singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness, towards the end of that hymn, we sing the words, Strength for today and Bright Hope for tomorrow. This speaks to us about divine hope, for at the end of the day, hope is everything. It gives us the strength to go on living. It gives us the courage <coughs> to face our own dark. And it carries us through the dark times with the promise of a glory that lies ahead. And it refuses to give in to despair. It's true that at times it can feel like hoping against hope. But then we turn back to the Gospels and encounter the man who suffered and died as we do. And as we recall that first Easter day, we begin to glimpse how the mystery of death is transfigured, is changed by the even greater mystery of life. Christ, risen from the grave, comes to meet his friends so fearful and forlorn. And they sense with a great relief of the Spirit that their lives are being given back to them again, for he is the resurrection and the life. That's the hope that lies at the heart of this funeral service. For this afternoon we celebrate not the end, simply the end of the beginning the start of a new chapter of God's grace and truth in Emmanuel's life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now come to make our prayers to Almighty God. And would you please either remain seated or kneel. Let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of love, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Emmanuel, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, for the memories we treasure today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your servant Emmanuel, as we also remember him. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven 
and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn. Give them patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Heal any memories of hurt and faith. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth, to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our God. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. As we prepare for the words of commitment, so we stand to sing the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father.
commend Emmanuel to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promise, we entrust Emmanuel to your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Emmanuel, go forth upon your journey from this world. In the name of God the Father, Almighty, who created you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who suffered death for you. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who strengthens you. In communion with the blessed saints, and aided, aided by angels and archangels, and all the armies of the heavenly host. May your portion this day be in peace, and your dwell, the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great goodness. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those that fear him. For he knows of what we are made, he remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass, we flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place will know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures for ever and ever toward those that fear and his righteousness upon their children's children. We have entrusted our brother Emmanuel to God's mercy, and we now commit his body to be cremated. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies, that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory for ever and ever. Amen. May God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all.
That's the uh, Methodist Central Hall. Yes. So that's where the reception is going to take place. So, but that's not going to be filmed. So, but I just wanted to establish the place and then let you know where Mr. Okran's life was celebrated. very much yes we've come to the end of the of what the final service for Mr. Emmanuel Benjamin uh, Okra God bless his soul thank you all very much for everything take care bye bye